Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda, and I'm an orthodontist. I'm also the CEO of Straight Smile Solutions. We help dentists all over the world understand orthodontics better. We work with all systems, braces, appliances, and brands of aligners, and we support all systems and brands. This video will share content that is the property of Invisalign and Align technology. We've made this video upon request of 40,000 plus doctors, subscribers, and followers to help them achieve better outcomes with their Invisalign cases. We do not work for Align technology. All opinions expressed in this video are the opinions of Straight Smile Solutions and not Align Technology. Thank you to Align Technology for continuing to support us educating and helping their doctors and letting us share this video around the world through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, and all of our social media platforms. Together, we unite to make more smiles. If you have questions or concerns about this video, please contact us directly at www.straightsmilesolutions.com. Enjoy the video. Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today I want to talk to you about when you log into your Invisalign account and you see that top right, it's called the supplemental order tabs. Um, you'll see like additional aligners, replacement, attachment template, warranty, Vivera, start a new treatment, all that kind of stuff. So I kind of wanted to, I feel like they like don't explain their portal very well. And it's one of those things you'll learn over time, but initially it can be very overwhelming. So I wanted to take the time to explain it, my words, maybe not <laughs> their words, but hopefully it helps you to know what to do and what each of these tabs are for. Okay. So, and cool thing is, this is kind of a fun fact. If you take your mouse and you hover it over each of these bars, it actually brings a little pop-up. So this is their pop-up that kind of tells you what it is. That's very helpful. So let's start with additional aligners. So additional aligners is what you click on when you've started a case and something went off track. What does off track mean? You have to go into my Street Smile Solutions, check out the tracking videos or email us or contact us at streetsmilesolutions.com. I'll be glad to send you lots of information on tracking. Tracking is the number one key to success with Invisalign treatment. If you don't get it and if your patient doesn't get it, your cases won't work out. And they don't do a great job explaining that. So if you went off track and if your patient didn't save all their older liners, like I always tell you to do, <laughs> I have them save them in like a little tackle box, label it, bring it to every appointment. This is standard stuff. Bring it because if they went off track, you go back and find the one that fits. It's really easy and that's going to save you a lot of time. Now, if they went like crazy off track just on a tooth, but maybe the other stuff started tracking, then you might have to do either a mid-course correction or a refinement, aka a revision. That's the terminology that ClearCorrect uses. All pretty much the same thing. Mid-course correction means that you're doing it in the middle of treatment. Let's say you got 20 aligners, you made it to nine, you went off track. That's a mid-course correction. Let's say you got had 20 aligners and you made it to 20 and then you noticed you didn't quite get what you wanted or you were off track at the end, that would be a refinement, whatever, same thing basically. It's the same button. Click the additional aligners button. To me, that's a weird button. They should just call it mid-course correction, revision, <laughs> refinement, but whatever. All right. And then they'll, we'll have a different, um, there's, I have other videos that will teach you what that, what to do once you click on that. So I just wanted to tell you about these tabs and click on my other videos for more information on that. All right, so number two would be replacement. So replacement is if something is broken or lost, okay? Like patient says, hey, I lost number seven, upper and lower, or I ran over it with a car, okay? They're gonna charge you for that. Um, depending on what plan you have is how much you pay, it's not that much. If you have a comprehensive plan, I think you're a teen, it's a little bit cheaper than if you have like a limited um, or express. But um, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60, I don't know, it's something like that, 10, I don't know. It changes all the time. You used to get free ones with the teen ones. I don't think you do anymore. Um, okay. So, but you don't always need to get a replacement. So usually my answer to that is, okay, um, can you put in the next one? So you lost seven. How far did you get with seven before you lost it? Oh, I wore it a week. Okay. Well, can you put an eight? Does it fit? Is it tracking completely? Can you get it down with Chewies? Yeah. Okay, fine. Then we don't need seven. But if they lost seven on the first day, most likely they're going to need to stay in six until seven comes in and wear it. And then, of course, patient pays for that. So you guys, that's another thing you're going to want to do is when you come up with your contract, and I have some basic contracts, but not everything's looped in because you're going to need to figure out how you want to do things. You know, What are you going to charge them? 
I mean, personally, you should charge them at least to cover your lab fee, plus maybe a little bit more for the time, um, unless you're throwing them in the mail. But um, okay, number three, attachment template. This is what you click on if you broke some attachments and let's say you were on a liner seven of 20 and you can't go back to the original attachment template at zero because that's not going to fit, right? Now, if you save your old attachment template and it's just one tooth, you can just cut that tooth out of the old attachment template. That's a little fun hack. If it's multiples, that's probably not going to work that well. So then you have to order attachment template. I'm pretty sure there's a small fee for that. Um, have your patient stay in the old aligner until you can get the new attachments on. Do not progress, okay? Because you're going to have to say what aligner you want it made off of. So that's where you have to have really good communication with the patient or that's not going to work. All right, last one, warranty. Oh, not last one, number four. Warranty. So warranty is what you click when you get either like, let's say there's like a sharp piece that patient just can't tolerate, or it's like a fabrication issue. There's a weird lip or it's like distorted. You have this more of this issue when you're doing impressions than when you do scans. Um, if you just get it, first thing I would recommend doing when you get your box in before you deliver is inspect everything, <laughs> you know, inspect the attachment template. You don't have to, I don't want you to open up with all the packages, but at least open up number one and make sure you don't see anything weird. I mean, it's very rare that there's a defect because they have pretty good QC, but you will have fit issues if you're using impressions versus scan. They're going to be exponentially higher. And this is where you're going to have to use that warranty button. Um, or if there's just like a consistently sharp thing, that the patient can't find, like polish down with their nail file or something. Um, Again, probably rated to impressions. If you're going to do a lot of Invisalign, you need to get a scanner. And of course, Invisalign only takes Nitero, which is the expensivest, the most expensive scanner with monthly fees. So lovely. Um, okay, so that's what the warranty is. You need to say where, where it is, what it happened. Um, usually this is free to have these remade, but they're going to probably want pictures, documentation. So you can't like have it be in two pieces because the patient ran over it and say it's a warranty problem. They're going to bust you on that. Okay. Vivera retainers. That's self-explanatory. Those are retainers that are made at the end of treatment. You can either, I have a separate video on Vivera, so just search for that. Um, but they come in packs of one or packs of four. Um, they are the best possible retainers. It is better to rescan for your Vivera than to make them off the old aligner. Um, there's also another option, which I didn't know about, which is Invisalign retainers, which is, I guess is a cheaper not made of Invisalign proprietary material retainers. I think they're about 50 bucks each. These are meant to be temporary retainers. So um, like, let's say patient, I don't know, patient's getting married and she's asked to have all her attachments off and get some temporary retainers for the wedding. And then she'll go back and get her attachments on again. That's where you would want to use something like that. Or you d had to do some restorative work, work mid-treatment and you just needed a temporary retainer. Um, made off a certain tray just to hold them. If you, if you don't have an in-house way of making retainers, this is it's almost like having access to a retainer lab, but it's cheaper than Vivera because it's meant to be sh short term. Um, if you have an in-house lab, you shouldn't be using this. That makes no sense. Uh, but just so you know, it's there, it's cheaper. Uh, what else? Yes, Invisalign retainers here. $50 per arch with treatment, $65 per arch with new impressions. Um, it's a temporary retention option consisting of one or one set of retainers. Oh, 50 per arch. Okay. Um, during the course of orthodontic treatment, it can be ordered from any Invisalign treatment stage or with a new impression. Okay. So it's more expensive if you send in a new impression or scan. Okay. And then lastly, there's start new treatment. You'd want to hit start new treatment if, hmm, I guess if the treatment was already closed out and you were starting a new treatment. I don't know how that works with the expiration date. If it, if it, I think if, if you're, if it hasn't expired yet, oh yeah, maybe if, even if you hit Vivera, if it hadn't expired, you could still start new treatment um, and you may not have a live lab fee as long as you were still within your five years for comprehensive. Um, so if it was outside the five years, I think it'll be closed and you have to start a brand new case, but you could double check with them. Anyways, that's pretty much what those tabs are. Hey, this is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today we're going to talk to you about how to submit for a revision, refinement, or mid-course correction um, with Invisalign. And it's pretty self-explanatory. I had a previous video that showed the supplemental order tab in the top right. You can go look at the video I posted before this and look at it. But you're going to go to the top right, click on additional aligners. Additional aligners is basically your mid-course correction, revision, refinement. Mid-course mid correction means that you're stopping in the middle of treatment 
you know, and starting over again. Maybe something didn't track. Maybe patient had to get a new filling. Maybe patient wasn't being compliant, whatever. If you have a comprehensive case, there should be no cost to this. If you have a more limited case, you might get one of these included, um, or you might get none. <laughs> so you might have to pay for it. So that's the benefit of doing comprehensive. Okay. Um, so that's that. And then from there, you're going to go ahead and push the button and get started. It's pretty much the same thing as submitting a new case. So do look at new case submission. I have a video that was probably posted, I don't know, a year ago. So I mean, it's further back, but just, you can go into my, um, either email me info at straightsmilesolutions.com, go to my website, straightsmilesolutions.com and message me and I'll send it to you. Or you can search around within my videos, um, search Invisalign and it should come up. Um, how to submit a case. But so I'm not going to go over all that, just going over anything that's a little bit different. But the main things you're going to want to mention is this is this is the confusing one here, the like reason for submission. And you have to be careful with what you pick here, because if you pick patient not compliant, they might charge you. Um, so I would either pick needs finishing improvements or teeth are not tracking would be my suggestion. Um, if you pick needs, needs new restoration, dental work or patient not compliant, I think there might be a fee. <laughs> not sure. I just never picked those. Um, and you know, teeth are not tracking or needs finishing improvements because it's just a more generalized term. We don't know why it's not working out. Maybe it's you, maybe it's me, who knows? Let's just click that. That's what I pick. Okay. Then they're going to ask what aligner are you currently wearing? So let's say a patient had like here, they had 40 aligners. Are they in 40? Did they finish? If so, that's a refinement. Are they in 20? Are they halfway there? If so, it's a mid course correction. Say what aligner they're in. Remember, if you're starting this, the patient should not be progressing. They need to hold in that aligner until the new stuff comes in. Okay. That's the main thing if they didn't finish. So, and if they can't hold in that aligner, then make them a retainer and have them hold in that, but say which aligner it was off of. So, because this is really, really important. And you write that aligner here from there. This is the confusing part. Okay. Again, they're going to ask you where you want attachments, where you don't want attachments, where you not want IPR, what teeth don't you move all the same stuff that we had when we submitted a new case, you should have to pull up their x-ray. This is a little confusing. I always pick the top one here. Um, what do you want us to do with existing attachments? This is the recommended one where they, you can take the impression with the attachments on. I don't take attachments off before I, unless I have one that's like broken or worn down. I just leave them on, take the scan. And then if they think I need slightly different attachments, they're going to virtually tell you which ones to remove and which ones to replace. So it's a lot less work than taking them all off and rescanning. But if it's a hot mess, um, and you just think that you need to do a complete do over, then just take them off. But yeah, I usually pick the top one here. This is like not at all explained well, by the way, in this line, if you hear this, um, lastly, are you treat treating both arches up or lower? Um, are you sending new impressions or scan? You should always be sending new impressions or scan. Do not do this without sending new ones. Cause they gonna, it's going to turn out bad. So you should say yes, yes. And how do you want your treatment plan set up? This is important. Um, there is, I, w I wouldn't pick this one, continue towards achieving the same tooth position because no, you might want to change things. So if you want something drastically different, click other. Otherwise I would say make finishing improvements to the tooth position. So that way you're not getting the exact same treatment plan or other, you know, if you want something totally different, if you're taking it a different direction, you can click that. But ultimately, you're going to get a clean check and you're going to be able to play with it again. And that's the main thing. And that's pretty much it. That's how you submit one. Um, as always, if you're going to do a more limited and express or a light, you're going to start, unless you have a really good tracking program, in-house compliance program, you're going to start getting hit with some major fees doing this. So I don't recommend any newbie Invisalign providers do any express or light cases. You should consider doing a white label if you're going to do that. At least you're paying a third of the treatment plan. Um, do everything comprehensive or at the very least, um, moderate, um, for the easy cases. And I would always submit everything as comprehensive, work it up to ideal. If it ends up being less than 20, then that's where you can consider bumping it down to a moderate. That's my, that's my trick. So hopefully that was helpful. 
Hey, this is Dr. Amanda with Straits Mass Solutions, and today I'm going to talk to you about something that I see quite often, which is an error that happens in Invisalign when you don't take good pictures or scans or impressions. And this is why it's super important to submit perfect records so that they can do a perfect setup. If you don't do, if you do a sloppy job submitting your records, you're going to get a sloppy setup and then your case is not going to turn out and you're going to wonder why. So let's start at the very beginning, how to double check your work. Now I have a pretty good eye when I see treatment plans and I know when things don't match up, but to a less trained individual, um, you're, you're not going to see it. So let me give you a hack to do this right. So log into your case, okay? And you want to go ahead and double check to make sure the art articulation or um, the way the bite is set up correctly. Because if it doesn't match your patient clinically, you're going to get a bad setup, okay? And that's not their job. That's on you. So in any case, what you want to do is go to the occlusion button up here, okay? Show occlusal contacts. Now, I'm at the beginning of the case, you know, checking at the end of the case is a whole nother thing. And we can do that in a separate video. Okay. I just isolate the maxilla here. Okay. And you can see the green dots. These are the dots that they're saying are in contact. Okay. If you use, if you used articulating paper, you should replicate this the way the patient is at the start. So if you aren't sure, okay, you need to double check, have your patient come in, use articulating paper and see if this matches. If it doesn't match, you either sent in incorrect photos where the patient's not biting correctly, or you sent in an incorrect scan or impression. That means you need to double check and redo your records, okay? Um, so that they can re-articulate it. So just as another hack here, let me scroll this to the end and we can do it at the end. Same thing goes with the ending. You want to see really good balanced contacts at the end. Um, for the most part, one of my preferences is to ask for three points of light contacts that are balanced on molars and two points of light contacts that are balanced on premolars and one point of light contacts that are balanced on canines. I don't like to see articulation or occlusion on the anterior teeth. So this case is not done, obviously. And by the way, again, you need to capture the terminal molars. So that means if the patient has second molars, you need to capture them. If the patient has third molars, you need to capture all of them as well. Not Maybe you can get half to two thirds and get away with it, but it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to fix bites or close spaces, you need to capture the whole thing, okay? So by the way, this case is not done, clearly. There's a couple errors that are going on here, but I just wanna show you what to look for and how to do it, okay? So in any case, there's my hack. You can also do it on the bottom, double check on the bottom too, okay? So it needs to replicate clinically as to what it should look like. And let's look at the ending. All right. That's a little bit better. All right. Any case. So please do this on all your cases. Double check. And if you want to make it even easier, take pictures. When you take your actual records for Invisalign, use the articulating paper, you know, and check it then. So and make sure it matches up. All right. Thanks so much. Have a fantastic day. If you have any questions, don't forget to submit your questions to straightsmilesolutions.com. Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And I wanted to talk to you a little about a little hack or a little tip that I like to use with my Invisalign cases. Um, this will save, this tiny little step will save you tons of heartache later and tons of time and the patients will be happier. So I recommend this at all times. And even if you have an iTero, you still want to do this tiny little step. And this tiny little step will cost you $6 per year. That's how cheap it is because that's what a container of articulating paper costs me. So I recommend even, uh, it's not a huge deal. If you have an iTero or a good scanner, it's probably not quite as critical at the start, but it's definitely critical at any mid-course correction, revision, or refinement when you take the clinical photos to use articulating paper before you take the photos, okay? Mark the contacts, then take your updated progress photos, okay? And then verify it when they do the setup, as you can see on the right side, make sure you're pushing the occlusion button at the top. And if you don't know where that is, please call me and I will tell you where it is. And you'll get a little, the little green dots. You wanna make sure your little green dots match with what you saw clinically. It's that simple because so often with mid-course corrections, revisions, and refinements, we're in kind of a transitory bite where you might not have a full stable bite. So they're doing their best, the technicians, based on the photos that you gave them and the scan, 
which sometimes isn't always that accurate and they're just doing their best. So you can't trust that what they gave you is right unless you verify it. And this is really the only way to verify it. And same hack, I would say for clear correct, however, they don't have the articulation feature and neither do most of the other ones. You would have to ask them to verify it, you know, and just visually eyeball it. But I like this the way you can just see the little dots and be like, oh, that's exactly what I saw. And then you feel good. If you fail to do this in true honesty, I see a lot of Invisalign cases per day, like a lot, a lot, like dozens, sometimes even more per day. Um, I wish Invisalign would give me a little credit for that, um, for how much I see, you know, but um, I would say one third to one half. This is my personal stats that I see one. And this is people with scanners. OK, people with iteros. This is really kind of unforgivable as far as I'm concerned. But and I see the notes, honestly, on the technicians leave. A lot of times they say, we're really not sure. You need to read the notes on the right side that they put in a little text. Because so often we I think they write a lot. They write too much. They need to like bullet it because it's like, it's honestly like verbal. <laughs> I'm not going to say what it is. It's like regurgitation. It's like, bleh. you know, they just have too much words and people ignore it, you know, because they just think it's it, it, a lot of times it's, it's not customized. It seems like it's just stocked, stock words, you know, so people ignore it, but there's some really critical information in that right side and you need to look at it. And most often, honestly, the technicians will say, Hey, we don't know if this bite is right. Can you please check it? And the doctors don't check it. Right. And then you're going to get some whack-a-mole setup that, that turn, you're going to get a whack-a-mole outcome is what's going to happen. It's going to take you another six months to fix it just because you didn't take this extra, you know, 30 seconds of your life to spend $6 a year to verify the bite. Anyways, long rant, but I'm telling you, this is the easiest way to get better Invisalign outcomes. And like I said, you can do it with any aligner company, but they don't necessarily have the articulation feature. So you're going to have to ask the technicians to verify it, whether it's done or not. I don't know. So um, anyways, that's pretty much it. Hopefully that makes sense. If you need more step-by-step -step help, as always, you can go to straightsmilesolutions.com. We're glad to help you with the case. Our fees are on the services page. You can take a look. If you are a DSN member, you get a free case, but you have to message us through workspace or workplace in order to redeem that. So that way we can verify that you're actually DSN. Hey, it's Dr. Amanda from Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today we're gonna to talk about, yay, you're done with your Invisalign case. What do we do next at the end? Like, yay, we got there, great outcome. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. So I would not rush, like patient finish, let's say it was a 25 case tray, tray case, and you got to the end of 25 and patient just finished 25 yesterday and they're like, hey, can I get my retainer? So you may want to hang out for a few weeks, especially if there were some extrusions and stuff, just to let things stabilize a little bit. You know, in the land of braces, we do this all the time for like a month or two. So we kind of tie it all together and let it sit. It's kind of like letting things stabilize um, because when you pop those um, attachments off, you might get a little shifting, you know, without the attachments on. So best to let it settle for a little bit, but that's just my tip. You could also build a couple passive aligners into your treatment plans, which basically is like, okay, we finished at 25. So 26 is basically just 25 again, but at least you get to change the aligners and get fresh ones. So patients don't really know it's passive aligners. So that way it's built in there. Just a little tip. Um, but if you're doing unlimited or comprehensive, you know, it's free. So why not? And you can do that with any aligner company. But anyway, so let's say we're done. We hung out for a little bit. We're pretty sure things are stable. How do we order retainers? And of course, retainers is, oh my goodness, I have so many blogs on retainers and retainer options and retainer aftercare programs and retainer subscription programs and what to do. But remember, retainers are for a lifetime. Okay. So, and I have like, if you want me to send you this, because I have, you know, like I said, almost a thousand pieces of content email me at info at streetsmilesolutions.com info at streetsmilesolutions.com or message me on my website streetsmilesolutions.com or through one of every other social media and I can send you exactly what you're looking for. But I have some step-by-step -step instructions, exactly what to say, do, everything like that, what your options are. But real quick, 
Remember, retainers are for life. The actual frequency of retainer wear is customized for the patient. You can't have a one size fits all approach. Um, always better to wear it more than less, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one clear retainer will not last you for a lifetime. You're going to need numerous. You need to be straightforward with your patient in terms of what's included with their plan. Ideally, you want to do that on the front end and not the back end and let them know at the beginning. Patients will get really, really, really upset if you did not give them what they expected. And if they're coming in expecting upper and lower bonded retainers and you're giving them one set of clear retainers that only last a few months, they're going to be pissed off and you're going to get a really bad review. So you should be having this retainer discussion like before you start, pretty much every few months. You may not know exactly what the right retainer is for them. And that's okay to say that, hey, I pick a customized approach. There's lots of different retainers. Did you come in with a certain type of expectation? I would love to hear about it. And I can tell you my philosophy and what I think might work for you. Um, and when I work with clients one-on-one -on -one with Street Smile Solutions, we talk about that and we talk about each patient and kind of where we think the retainer should be and what might be good for this patient. But anyways, Vibear retainers are great retainers. Um, they're customizable. There's a lot of cool things that they have. Um, they're nice. They're pretty strong. You will still need several Viveras over a lifetime. You might even need more than that. They come in packs of one or packs of four. So eight total, four uppers and lowers. Um, let me walk you through what to do. Let's say you want to order Viveras and you don't want to go. You can order very similar retainers. It may not have the same scalloping or some of the same features, um, I'd be a different price point. It may not come in a pack of four, but you could order very similar clear retainers from any local lab as well. Whether they are is, I mean, they should be like 040 um, and stuff like that. But um, when you make them in-house just in your own suck down machine, it's probably not going to be as good as a Vivera because unless you have a really, really high quality like Biostar pressure-y suck down thing, I'm going to have some videos about that versus just your regular vacuum former. It's former. It's not going to be as good. You're going to get more relapse. So I wouldn't recommend that their forever retainers just be something you made in your back lab unless you have a really good lab. So just saying there is a difference. And, I, and I've seen a lot of relapse happen with in-house clear retainers that are just made in somebody's lab. Okay. So personally, if they relapse in the first couple months and you just made an in-house retainer, you're liable. You need to redo their braces or their Invisalign. And of course, if you did, you know, a comprehensive case, you can retreat at no cost. But, you know, hassle for you, right? So um, so let's talk about that. So you let it settle for a little bit. That's great. And now you go in and you're going to order your Vibra. So you need to make a decision. So you go to the right side, to the right of the patient portal, and you click Vibra retainers, right? And this is really small, so I apologize, but you guys get the idea. And then um, they're going to ask you, do you want one or do you want the pack of four? And I think the pack of four is four uppers and four lowers. Eight total is 275. One is, oh, I can't even see that, 95, something like that. So um, one upper and one lower or something like that. Um, do you want to treat both arches, upper or lower? And then you're going to go ahead and say where you are. You know, um, do I want to make it off? Am I going to send a new scan? You know, am I going to take the attachments off, clean them up, rescan? That's the recommended choice. Or do you want to order it off one of the previous aligners? And if so, you need to say which one. It will usually fit better to go ahead and take the attachments off and rescan. Some people, what they'll do at the end of treatment is they will order just one off the end aligner and then, you know, let their gums get healthier, um, get a cleaning, all that, then rescan and make the pack of four as a bundle, but that's an option. So there's a lot of things, it would be better, but you, I mean, I don't know many people that give the pack of four uppers and the lowers as stock, that's like an option. Um, it's a nice thing, you know, to do. I mean, they're gonna need more than a couple in a lifetime. So again, you gotta clarify that with your patient. What are they getting? What are the options? Nobody likes an upsell at the end. So you need to be having, and there's a lot of cool retainer subscription programs that are out there, Retainers for Life, um, Retainers Forever, Retainer um, Forever Align Club, ProAlign maybe has one. There's so many different things that are out there that you can, third-party ones that you can join or your patient may choose to join. So, I mean, if you don't come up with a plan, they're going to, it's only a matter of time before venture capitalists jump on this because it's a huge opportunity. So I suggest you come up with your own in-house plan for now, right? 
Um, another question is, are you going to put a fixed lingual retainer on? If so, it's recommended that you put it on first and then rescan. And they're saying that they may or may not have to cut a window around that, you know? So, cause I mean, anytime you're taking an aligner on and off over a fixed thing, it can torque it. So they're saying they're not responsible. So that's a question. So again, I have tons of content on fixed retainers. You should definitely go to my YouTube, um, put in bonded retainer or permanent retainer or whatever. Um, if not e email me, uh, message me on any of my socials and I'll send you the content. But, um, I highly recommend you don't just use a braided wire and slap it on. That never works out good. So you should have it customized, done by the lab, done passively, passively, because I've seen some terrible stuff happen with that. Uh, what else? Pontix. They're going to ask if you want a Pontic. If you want it, obviously, you're going to have to fill it. But I have tons of videos on filling Pontix as well. This is a new thing. I didn't even know they had that. They're going to ask you if you want bite ramps. And I love, love, love that they have that. So now I'm actually more on the Vivera bandwagon than I ever was after I saw that. Um, it must be new because I hadn't seen that in a while. So why would you do that? I would only, I mean, obviously we're not actively moving teeth, so we're not leveling the curve of speed, but a lot of times when you have plastic over the back teeth, you can, if you have a clencher or a grinder, you can get a posterior open bite. So for those type of patients, and if you've, if you've seen that happening during your treatment, or if you've experienced posterior open bite during your treatment, or if you had bite ramps during your treatment, you might want to consider putting them on your retention um, as well. And for me, like as a clencher, it really is nice to be able to have that type of ramp just to wear at nighttime. Um, it takes a lot of pressure, like a lot less headaches and stuff like that. It's a free service, so you can go ahead and put that on if you want to. Um, but keep in mind, you're going to be front loading those top teeth if you do that, those front teeth. So if you have endo or trauma teeth, you would not want to do that or perio or something like that. You'd want to have a full stable. So just things to think about. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And then you go ahead and submit and you pay um, and they ship it. So that's your Vivera retainer. So I think they're pretty good value. Um, Vivera stain a lot more than some other retainers do. You know, whether it's the Zendura A or the Essex, I've done a lot of staining challenges. So just keep that in mind um, that they do stain. So patients shouldn't be eating or drinking with them in, you know, um, again, frequency where frequency might be three months, full time, six months, full time, something like that. Please read my other blogs about phasing down your retainer, when to go to night, stuff like that. If you don't do this right, you're going to get relapsed. So it's really critical that you do it the right way. And not every patient is the same. So um, have a chat with me if you have any questions. This is Dr. Amanda from Street Smile Solutions, and I had a couple great questions come in today that I wanted to answer. Um, first one was about, it's actually a pretty common question, it's about Vivera Retainers, which is a branded retainer which is made by Invisalign, which is aka publicly traded company Align Technology. That is their brand of retainers. You can buy them in packs of one or packs of four. Um, you do need to buy them through your dentist. Um, any dentist that is Invisalign certified can prescribe Vivera retainers. In order to get those retainers, you'll need to either have a scan or an impression done by your dentist. If you've gone through Invisalign treatment, your last, and you're happy with the outcome and your dentist is happy with the outcome, that last retainer, sorry, that last stage and the very last aligner can be that file, that um, 3D image can be transferred to be made into a Vivera retainer. So for clarification, you really shouldn't use your last aligner as a retainer because it's way thinner than an actual retainer should be to hold the teeth. So you're moving your teeth, you're moving your teeth. The properties of the plastic that moves the teeth during Invisalign treatment or regular aligner treatment is much um, thinner and much more um, elastomeric, elastic-ish, in order to move the teeth, right? So that's the properties that we need to move teeth. When we're done and we want to hold those teeth in the final position for life, then we need a thicker retainer. So the approximate thickness, just for the uh, dental geeks out there, for movement retainers or aligners are usually at 030 in terms of thickness. That's I think that's in inches. And the actual retention is usually 040. So it's like a little bit thicker, not that much. You're talking like micro 
little, little, little microns, like tiny bit thicker, but it does make a difference when you feel the retainers versus the aligners, they're much stiffer, which is the goal, right? A um, little harder to get off, et cetera. So approximate amount of time that they last for, which is why you really can't just have one retainer. And I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions, not only for dentists, but also for patients is, okay, I'm going to either use my last aligner as a retainer. Well, they're not going to stay straight if you do that. So that's not a great idea. Um, same thing with retainer. You can't just have one retainer. You need to have many retainers throughout your lifetime and you need to factor that into your budget. And that's a really important question that you need to ask your dentist, how is that going to work? Do they store your final image in the cloud? If it's with Invisalign, they do. What happens if you move and go to another state? How are you going to get more retainers? Can you just order more retainers ahead of time and kind of stockpile them, which is what I kind of recommend? There are some services out there and companies out there, and I think it's going to become a lot more popular that have retainer subscription programs, not only third party direct to consumer, but also through your dentist. So these are all fantastic questions to ask your dentist. If you're a dentist, feel free to talk to me about it. I have a lot of blogs on the subject. I've helped doctors set up their own retainer subscription programs. And just so there's no miscommunication between dentists and patients of what you need to do at the end. Generally, I will, if I'm super happy with the outcome of an Invisalign case, I'm going to go ahead and order that Vivera off the last aligner, but I'm going to tell the patient they need four uppers and lowers. I'll include one with my treatment. Okay. After that, that's on them. If they want to order a pack of four, I'm not going to necessarily upsell it. I'm going to charge them maybe like three or $400. That's about my fee for eight more, four uppers and four more, four lowers. Um, but that's my fee, right? I'm not making anything off that. If they get it right at the time of debond, but if they get it later, there probably will be an additional fee. If teeth move and you need another set, then that's another scan and another delivery. So that's going to be slightly more expensive than if I just push a button to order it. So I don't know if that makes sense. If you have a 3D printer in your office um, and a vacuum form or a Biostar machine, this is something you can totally do. You can't buy the Invisalign branded Vivera material on its own, the sheets that has to be made at Invisalign headquarters, which takes a little more time. But you can make clear retainers within your own office or you can go to a regular lab and have them made, but it's not going to be made of Vivarium material. Personally, who cares? There's a lot of other great O4 oral materials that are out there that to me work just as well. They may not be scalloped and have the same trim line. They may not be branded, okay? But um, they are there. But in that case, you know, that final STL, you need to find a place to store that if you're doing that, if you're not using Invisalign. So, and there's a benefit to that because anytime the patient needs more, they can just call you, you push a button. Anyways, I know that's a lot of information. Hopefully, um, if you have any questions, give me a holler. I'd be glad to talk to you about it, both dentists and patients. If you want to talk about stuff, we do have a patient facing Facebook page. So feel free to ping us um, or go to Facebook and search uh, dentist moderated orthodontic support group or something like that. I can't remember the exact name, but you'll see it there. Um, the banner is pink. So anyways, dentists, please go to straightsmilesolutions.com. Continue to submit your questions. I hopefully that answered your question. And yeah, retainers are a really hot topic. This is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions. And today we're going to be talking about the latest blog that Kevin O'Brien posted. If you're not familiar with his blogs, they're actually really great. I've been following him for many years. Um, he is amazing at taking a piece of literature, like a white paper, and just breaking it down to like no BS, you know, no sponsorships, nothing like that. Here's what the research says. Here's the take home message that you can use clinically. So this time he reviewed, and this is like one of the most common questions I get from doctors is about retention. Basically, my take home message, if you've seen my other videos and blogs about retention, is that it's not a one size sits, fits all approach. Not everyone can get one kind of retention. Sometimes patients come in with a personal preference. Maybe they've had an experience with a certain type of retainer before. This is maybe a retreatment case, or they have friends that have a strong opinion and they're already, you know, leading towards one direction. It doesn't mean it's the right way, but um, always good to listen because. When I see reviews that patients post about their orthodontic experience with a certain doctor, one of the num I'd say top three complaints is about retention. Like there was a miscommunication or they don't like the type that they got or they feel it doesn't fit or they feel the relapse is due to that retention, et cetera, et cetera. So in any case, you should definitely read this blog, Are Fixed or Removable Retainers Better? And coming into this, I already kind of knew the answer. Um, again, all retainers can work well. Um, obviously, fixed retainers, when made well, 
when placed completely passively and bonded correctly on the right kind of patient who takes care of them the right kind of way, work fantastic. Plenty, plenty of people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s that still have their bonded retainer from decades ago, you know? But again, all the components, all the stars have to align in order for fixed retainers to be great. And if they don't, they're the worst. They're awful. You're going to get, you're going to have emergencies and they're going to happen at inconvenient times. And when there's an emergency, it, big things will happen. Big problems will happen very fast. There can be pain. There can be very accelerated relapse movement. If it happens at an inconvenient time, say you're on vacation, there's no orthodontist nearby, you may be in for a very expensive fee to get that repaired. And that is the responsibility of the patient. Um, also, doctors, if you're going to place a bonded retainer, that's your patient for life now. You are now married to that patient for life. That means you need to spell it out as to how your warranty policy works, what are the fees if it breaks. Usually for me, I'm very, very rarely going to place a bonded retainer unless requested um, or unless there's some type of clinical reason for it. If I choose to place it for a clinical reason, say it's like a perio splint type of thing, then I'm responsible for it for life. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to pay to fly that patient out to get it fixed. If they move, I'll fix it, but you have to come to me. So, you know, um, some other doctors will do that kind of warranty thing for life as long as the patient, let's say you're a general dentist or pediatric dentist, as long as the patient continues to check in. Um, and continues to be a regular general dental patient, then they will continue to warranty it for life. So, or you can warranty it for a given period of time, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, a year. And after that, any type of breakage is done at a cost of X. If you're going to do something like that, that's totally fine too, but you need to write it out and have the patient agree to it and sign it before you place that. Again, this is where the issues happen. What happens most of the time when there's breakage on one of these, there's also going to be relapse. They, they pretty much go hand in hand unless it happens like very quickly. You know, you realized it broke, nothing moved yet. It can move in just a day, um, you know, and they get in and they get it fixed. That's usually more the exception than the rule. So you need to also let the patients know that there will be an additional fee for any type of movement or relapse that might occur. And like I said, in bonded retainers, it tends to happen quicker. So that's just my experience. All right. So that is my high level bonded retainers story. Uh, but anyway, so this is a research article. He's talking about this. Um, the uh, I think it's European EJO, uh, European Journal of Orthodontics published it. Um, here's the link if you want to see it. And basically they said any clinical statistical differences in an ASIC versus a bonded over 18 months? And the answer was no. There's no clinical statistical difference. One of the benefits, like I said, of Essex is that if, assuming, you know, any, let's say they stopped wearing it for a few days or they forgot it and they didn't wear it. Um, as long as you're wearing it, assuming it's made well, again, we're going to say that. Sometimes Essex made in house aren't made well. If they're not made well, they're not going to work. So assuming it's made well, if you have some movement and you put the Essex back on and you use your Chewies or use your vibratory device, it should straighten up. I mean, assuming it's a small amount of, amount of relapses, but the large around, amount of relapse is not going to happen. It's not possible. So you would need aligners. That's, so it basically works like an aligner. So you'd have to have relapse less than basically maybe 0.25 millimeters per tooth, 0.30 millimeters per tooth. So it works like an aligner, one aligner. So that's the benefit of that. Remember, Essex retainers, they get stretched out over time. They're not meant to last a lifetime like a bonded retainer can, like a Holly retainer can. I can tell you my Holly retainer is 20. It's, it's celebrating its 25th birthday and I've never, ever had to adjust it. It works just like it did the day I got it. I have upper and lower. I love them. So my, it's my personal preference. But, you know, you guys need to figure out what's best for your patient. So anyways, yeah, no difference. Just remember though, if you're going to debond a patient or if you're going to finish an aligner patient and do an Essex kind of retainer, you are preserving or retaining what they have at the time of debond. And if you didn't make it perfect and if the bite isn't fully settled and all the teeth aren't properly interdigitated where they're supposed to be, which sometimes they're not, um, you're preserving that. 
which is really not the best thing. So, you know, that can be the, those last few steps in ortho are, are tricky. Um, and a lot of times patients get burnt out and they ask to get their braces off a little bit early, um, which is fine. But you probably don't want to do an S6 retainer then. So that's just one of those things that you'll want to let patients know. Maybe you want to do a wraparound retainer um, on top. Um, they have to wear it or bonded retainer top and bottom. Um, with a wraparound retainer, uh, goodness, there's so many different things you can do. Um, you could clip the Invisalign or the um, aligners distal to the threes, distal to the canines, and let the bite settle for a week and then scan for the Essex retainer. So, so many things you can do. But all right, hopefully I kind of blew your mind with this. Thank you to Kevin O'Brien for his great um, blog post that kind of brought up this whole conversation. And if you'll have any questions, you're welcome to go to straightsmilesolutions.com. Ask your questions. There's a contact us button in the top right. You can schedule a complimentary conversation. You can send us an email. We love to have your questions and we really appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to check out our webinars. They are all free. Um, podcasts. We have so much going on. Um, visit straightsmilesolutions.com and click on the seminars tab. Hey, this is Dr. Amanda from Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today we had a question come in on our Facebook group about Vivera retainers and how long they last, and just retainers in general, clear retainers, how long they last. We have a lot of other great videos, and I recommend that you do some search throughout our um, YouTube channel to see everything we have on retainers. I don't want to, um, you know, beat a dead horse, but um, I want to just really focus right now on the whole Vivera versus Essex retainers, Vivera versus other clear retainers, how long they last, how many you're going to need in a lifetime and really put down a few um, myths and misconceptions that are out there that clearly are being spread by dental offices, people that are misinformed. So first of all, let's go over what is a Vivera retainer. And right now I'm on the Invisalign or Align Technology website. Um, specifically, Vivera retainer is a brand of clear retainers that is made by Align Technology or Invisalign. So that's the retainers you get if at the end of your Invisalign treatment, you want their brand of clear retainers. Now, not all retainers are alike. So you need to be, the Vivera ones will actually have the Align Technology logo on them. I can spot them a mile away. They're very, very good retainers. I can tell you what our fee is as a dentist, what Align Technology charges us because they make them, they deliver them. So last I checked, and I might be off by a few dollars, it's around $299 for eight uppers and eight lowers. Excuse me, four uppers and four lowers, a total of eight retainers. So, I mean, do the math. Eight goes into about um, 30, um, a little less than about 38-ish per retainer. So pretty expensive. And that's the dentist lab fee. And they're probably going to mark that up for you significantly because you know, we have to have the time to scan and deliver. So great questions to ask. So that, again, I want to clarify, that's our fee. And some dentists, if they're a diamond provider or a double diamond provider or, you know, any of these little hierarchies, when you search them up, they're going to get a discount on that. So that may not be their price. That's the regular price for us lowly lay people. But um, keep in mind that you're probably maybe not even getting Vivera retainers with your treatment. You have to ask. That's something that you would want to get in writing before you start treatment because sometimes they're going to assess an additional fee for retainers in general. And sometimes they're going to make in-house retainers. I hesitate to have you accept an in-house retainer and you need to ask that or an off-label retainer because the quality can be all over the place. And if the quality isn't good and as a layperson or as a consumer, there's no way you're going to know if the quality is good on that retainer. Um, it takes certain equipment to make a really, really good retainer. Um, it's very easy to underdo it, overdo it, overcook it, distort it. Um, you know, I've made a lot of retainers and I've seen great ones and I've seen not great ones. And you can have an awesome dentist or orthodontist that gives crappy retainers. So, and you can have an awesome outcome all those years in braces or Invisalign. And if the retainers aren't good, phew, it's gone, you know, and it's not your fault. But then again, you're not going to know, right? So that's why I really just want to bring this up because I want consumers to have an awareness of what to get. And that question before you even start that orthodontic case should be, are retainers included? And how many retainers are included? 
And how long do I, should I expect these retainers to last? And what happens if I need new retainers? You know, do I have to pay an additional fee? Do you have a warranty on retainers? If they're clear retainers or they call them clear retainers, ask, are they Vibera branded? If they're not, I don't know. I've seen really good ones come from other labs and I've also seen bad ones and you're not going to know the difference. So I know if you get Vivera, there's a standard of quality. They will be really, really good. They're all made at a good quality. So personally, for that reason, I'm going to ask you to ask for them by, by name. Um, other ones are actually quite good. And there's a couple other really great retainers out there. I'm going to throw a couple other brands out there. And there are also some retainer subscription clubs that are out there or orthodontic aftercare programs. And I'm not necessarily going to mention them by name because I haven't necessarily vetted them all. But it's pretty cool because at the end of treatment, and you could store your image in the cloud. And then anytime you need a new retainer or on a regular frequency, new retainers will come to your house. You can either push a button and it locks in a really low fee. And realistically, how often will you need to change your clear retainer? You know, get a new one. They do wear out. They do warp. And there's so many variables. Like, there's no way I can give a date to that. Some people might need to change them every two months. Some people may be fine for a couple years. So variables might be if you grind your teeth, if you clench your teeth, if you have acidic saliva, um, if you're drinking or eating with them in, if you don't store them correctly, if you don't brush them correctly. Um, but some of the stuff is your fault and some of the stuff isn't your fault and some of the stuff can't be predicted. So my suggestion is to plan on at least initially while you're in the full-time wear, um, replacing them at least a few times. And then after that, at least every six months to a year, probably for the rest of your life. I know that's a lot of retainers, maybe 10 years down the road, you might be good for a year or two, but you better expect on, I would say you need way more than four uppers and four lowers for life. You need to have a plan because it can get awful expensive. And that's why I love the idea of the subscription program. Now, keep in mind, anytime you get a new filling or new dental work, you're going to need a new scan and new retainers. And again, anytime you get a new filling, you want to really ask your doctor, hey, do you have an intraoral scanner? Because impressions are not the same quality. And will, after my filling, can I get a new retainer? And what type of retainer will I get? And what will be the cost for that? Don't assume you're going to get a free retainers after a new filling. They're not even probably thinking about that. You need to bring it up. Because if you try to jam that old retainer back on, there's no way it's going to fit perfectly. You know, they can try to make it almost the same shape, but it's never the same. And if you have a really great retainer, it will not fit ideally. And weird things are going to happen to your bite. So you always should plan on getting a new retainer after a filling, which is why I really encourage patients to get all their dental work done before braces, before ortho, or at least before retention, you know? all that elective stuff, anything that maybe kind of needs to be replaced, get it done. Because I mean, I can tell you for me, I'm not going to tell you my age, but I'm kind of old. And I haven't had any new fillings since I was in high school. There ought to have some fillings, you know, a few, not giant ones. Um, but I haven't had anything. Nothing has changed. So guess what? My retainers still fit uh, several decades later from when I was in high school. Because I take care of my teeth, I blossom, brush and floss. Um, and I haven't needed anything. I'm not saying that something couldn't happen, but if you take care of your teeth, you shouldn't need new stuff done. So just a little bit of encouragement. But I know that if I have a clear retainer, anytime I need something done, I'm going to have to pay for a whole new one. And that could be very expensive because some people might charge a thousand dollars, you know, it's a lot of money. So again, great to have warranties, great to have insurance. A lot of doctors out there will warranty your retainers for life as long as you um, get your dental work done there, as long as you keep coming there. So all kinds of great questions to ask. All right. Hopefully that informed you a little bit. All right. And then um, just one company to look out for that I think is super awesome. Um, and I'm super excited about them. And they're going to have some really great retention options is a company that is going to be called Pro Align or Straight Teeth Solutions. They're launching soon. It's a great company. They're going to have some great packages for retention and you don't have to have your ortho done to, to join the retention program. So check it out. Dr. Amanda from Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today we're going to be talking about purchasing an intraoral scanner. And kind of released this in preparation for Chicago midwinter. I know, goodness, 
with my Straight Smile Solutions prospective clients, I get this question multiple times a week. So I partnered up with the team at Yankee Tech Digital, and I'm happy to introduce you to them if you want to know more about what they do um, to help bring you this article. Thank you so much to Manny and Michael for helping me prep this article and um, the content within it. Um, and I'm going to talk to you guys about these top 18 points to consider when you're purchasing an intraoral scanner. And if you're going to be at Chicago midwinter, be sure to visit straightsmilesolutions.com, ping me, friend me on LinkedIn, go to our YouTube site um, and learn more. But this is going to be a long video. So hang with me as we go through this and feel free to message me with questions. So first of all, I just want to say off the top that to me, getting an intraoral scanner is 100% a no-brainer. And I know that the team at Yankee Tech Digital agrees too. I Listen, if you show me your numbers, show me your procedures, show me what you're doing, I'm going to push back and show you that you will make this profitable and you'll be, you know, you'll be in the black certainly within a very short period of time if you're using your intraoral scanner wisely and if you're picking the right one for the practice that you're doing and your particular practice philosophy. So that brings me to the first item on the list, which is price, you know? What should you be spending and how much should you be spending? And there's a huge range of prices for these. And we'll kind of go over some of the other features. And I think that will help you understand the price one a little bit more. But just, again, just something you may or may not know, that there are some labs that are willing to help subsidize the financing um, for intraoral scanners um, if you are a loyal customer. So, and I do know some that are doing this. So feel free to message me. and I'd be glad to connect you. Um, also, there are some scanning companies that will lease scanners, you know, lease to own kind of stuff. So, you know, open your mind. It doesn't hurt to ask. And as my auntie would say, don't ask, don't get. So why not ask, right? It doesn't hurt to ask. Number two, maneuverability. So what is your plan for this scanner? Are you going to just park it in one op and never move it out? Do you have a designated scam op? Um, is this scanner going to need to be mobile from op to op? Is it going to need to be mobile from office to office? Um, or are you going to need to use it portably, like at a health fair or something like that? So these are all things you need to talk to your team about. Monthly user fees. Some scanners have monthly fees. Um, some don't. Some do only for the first year. Um, some don't include the data fee. So these are all things you need to ask and look into and add it into the overall cost of the spanner, scanner. Um, tech support. Listen, stuff's going to go wrong. So who's responsible when things go wrong? Um, things are going to break. Things aren't going to be connecting properly. Who's going to be helping you? How quickly can they help you? Does that cost additional fees? Um, I know the team at Yankee Tech Digital can help you with that as well. It's not included in the cost of the scanner. It's an additional cost. But these are all things that you need to have set up um, because when things go wrong, you don't want it to bring down your operations. Wait. So question is, you know, you need to hold that scanner in your hand and then hold it for a really long time <laughs> and see how that feels. If the darn thing is heavy, you know, and if you have the same team member doing it day after day after day, they're not going to be too happy with you. So, I mean, for sure, I believe everyone should be cross-trained, but it also shouldn't be something that's done day in, day in out unless it's super light. So these are just things to think about too. Um, tip size and comfort. If you're working with pedo patients, teen patients, or geriatric patients, you need the most small streamlined tip that's really comfortable. Because, you know, I've had some experience with some scanning units, um, and they're huge and they're sharp and the edges are rough and getting back there is torture. It's really like a medieval torture device. And I'm not saying that your staff member can't finesse it to do it right because everyone can do it gently. But, you know, if there's even more of a learning curve to get it comfortable, maybe it's not the right one. So, I mean, there are ones that are super petite and tiny and get, get around all those edges, you know, without poking the patient. Cross arch accuracy in microns. So there, depending on what you're doing with it, if you're scanning a whole mouth versus just a tooth for a crown, there's a different level of accuracy. So you need to think about what you're using it for. And if you're at all thinking about doing, say, dentures or aligners, then you need to have a minimum cross arch accuracy. So things to ask about. Because you'd hate to get something and then, oh, sorry, can't use it for aligners, you know? Replacement tip costs. Um, Tip lifespan, it's all kind of the same thing. Some are going to have disposable tips. 
Some are going to have autoclavable tips. The question is, how much is it per disposable tips? Obviously, do the math. Or how much is it for a replacement tip? What's the average lifespan of the tip? And is that guaranteed? So do the math, see which one's better. Obviously, disposable chips are not that environmentally friendly. But if you're not going to have access to your autoclave, um, you know, and that's gross, you know. So um, things you got to think about. You know, you got you to gotta be OSHA compatible. Touch screen capability. That is a pet peeve of mine because I've certainly done a lot, as you know, a lot of secret shopping to some of these um, scan shops, direct to consumer scan shops. And that grosses me out when <laughs> they do not respect OSHA with a touch screen. That's nasty. I see it all the time. So um, make sure your, your team members are following OSHA standards. Um, another one to talk about is file type. So Everyone's pretty familiar with STLs, but then there's another file format called PLY. PLY um, contains more information than STL and is becoming more popular amongst CAD CAM software packages. So these are just things you want to look into. Not everyone offers PLY. You may not even need it. Um, mode of image capture. There is There are ones that are continuous and there's ones that are stable. Continuous image capture is video-based and video-based inter-oral scanners are getting faster and easier. So just things to find out if you need to be connected to the cloud while you're scanning or if you can be offline. So definitely ask about that and then just think about your own network and how that would work within your office and where you're planning to use it. Obviously, if you're going outside your office, that would not be ideal. Um, Use of powder. I know everyone goes, yuck, powder. But um, sometimes powdering is necessary um, if there's a shiny surface. So, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you got to think about what you're doing. Open solution. So I think this is a total no-brainer unless you want to be, you know, <laughs> totally um, owned by other companies. So basically, you want to have an open connection so that the lab can work with any CAPCAN system that accepts STL, the standard format. Um, that way, the lab can use its own equipment for the 3D printing, right? Um, so I think that's definitely the way to go. We all see what happens when an open system is not accepted. So we talked a little bit about disposable tips already, manufacturer's warranty. Does the manufacturer's warranty offer an extended warranty? If so, how long? What does it cover? Um, multidisciplinary functionality. What are you going to use this for? Are you going to use it just for aligners? Are you going to use it for surgical guides? Are you going to use it for crown and bridge? Um, what are you using it for? Everything, anything, some stuff, don't know. If you're not sure, you want to make sure you have multidisciplinary functionality. Uh, and lastly, the automatic bite alignment registration. This is also a no-brainer for me. If the bite isn't articulating, you, you don't want to have to manually do that. It's kind of a pain, so you want it to automatically do that. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, so many things to think about, but for sure, message me if you have any questions or if you want me to connect you with the Yankee Tech Digital crew, I can do that as well. Um, go to straightsmilesolutions.com to schedule a complimentary, complimentary consultation. Hi, this is Dr. Amanda yeah. with Straight Smile yeah. Solutions. Yeah. We are the online resource for GPs and pediatric dentists to learn more about orthodontics and how to incorporate it into their practice more productively. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit, just in case you missed it, about the new Invisalign Itero Element software upgrade and what that means for you and what that means for your practice. If you missed the webinar this morning, I am going to show you some clips of it. It was incredible. Dr. Gallo did a great job explaining and really just capturing why this software upgrade is just a game changer, to use his words. Uh, incredible. So I'm going to show you a couple clips just to take that whole 42 minutes and summarize it into a few minutes on why if you don't have an iTero element, you should consider getting one. And if you have one, make sure to download that software upgrade. All right, we'll go ahead and start here real time. So she's just moving the wand very gently over those teeth and scanning them out. Now, a couple things I want to point out to you, if you're looking at the Itero screen, you could see that as she's scanning, it's coming out in color. This is a nice upgrade that was just done for Invisalign. Previously, Invisalign used to scan, it used to look like a yellow model, but now it comes up in real time. So if you look, you could see that it is looking perfectly like a person's real teeth. It has a real live simulation to it. Patients like that a lot, as well as dentists like that. You know, it kind of gives a real feel to what you're doing. You can see how easily she's just manipulating all the way around. I'm going to get all the corners of all the teeth. 
The other thing you might be noticing is as she passes over an area, if there's an area that has a missing spot, there's something called scanning optimization. Scanning optimization means as she's scanning over a spot, if she misses a spot, or if there's a spot that's a little bit unclear, it will come up as purple. And that'll be a quick indication to her, hey, I got to double back and just get that so that was a great summary about the color upgrade and the scanning optimization upgrade. So hopefully if you have any questions about that, let me know. The other part I wanted to go over with you is about GPT. He's kind of calling that the GPS for Invisalign or Itero, where it tells you what goal you're trying to get and if you got there in, in a nutshell. So we'll go ahead and take you there and he'll explain it perfectly. Here we go. Or stage 11, which is where he should be today. I think that that's what we're up to. In the trays. Yep. The 11s. And going through that. Now, let's go through some other terminology while waiting for that. There's also something called, so we've done optimized scanning. We've done progress assessment or progress tracking or GPT, three different names for it. We also have something called the outcome simulator. Let's say Chris was a new patient. We weren't sure how it was going to look with Invisalign, or Chris wasn't sure what it was going to look like. What I could do after I scan it is click on something called the Outcome Simulator, and it will give me kind of a rough version of what his ClinCheck will look like one day. And then I could show it to the patient. I could send it to Costa Rica, and I can actually send it to the patient. So we're going to have a, we can have a, nowadays, we can have an exact look of how the ClinCheck is going to look. All right, I see that the system has found Chris, and when we started, I'm going to... Click download the treatment plan. It's found Chris in the Invisalign system. It knows what his teeth are supposed to look like. And now it's going to run a simulation to grade us. Now there's going to be three different colors that come up on the simulation. A green color means that the tooth has completed its movement and is in the right spot. A yellow color on a tooth would indicate that the tooth is 90% of the way there, but maybe needs a little bit of a refinement to kind of touch something up. And a gray would mean that we didn't 100% complete the movement. Maybe we're 70%, 65%, and we might want to go and do a refinement on that. So here it is. Let's take a look and let's read what the computer is telling us. So here was Chris's teeth. Here's what they're supposed to look like. And here's what they do look like. And you can see it's reading that that front tooth in the middle there is nice and green. There are no grays on the bottom. Every tooth on the bottom is where it's supposed to be. And this is a successfully completed treatment. So I could say with complete confidence, both by looking at his teeth and by running the GPT, that Chris's teeth on the lower are officially done. Congratulations, Chris. You have completed the lower treatment. Now, let's take a look at the top treatment. Let's see how we did on the top. So here we are on the top. This is what his teeth are supposed to look like. And here's where they are now. So you can see my top is reading that both of the lateral incisors are coming up gray, which means that we didn't 100% complete the movement. And even though my eye can't see it in the ClinCheck, he looks okay. And even the tracking looked pretty good. The computer's saying, nah, David, you're about 5 to 10% off on those teeth. And it's probably worthy to do a little bit of a refinement just to move those teeth a little bit more. Now, it can actually break down the movements for you. So if I look at the tooth, I can see number 7 is missing a little bit of buccal lingual inclination. And number 10 is also missing a little bit of buccal lingual inclination. Now, the teeth did move, and I could see that number 10 did successfully translate to the buccal. That's indicated by a green over here. Can everyone see that green? That green means that that number 10 tooth perfectly moved out to the buccal the way that it was supposed to, and it was also supposed to rotate. Can everyone see over here? I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. This number 10 was doing a couple of movements, it was rotating out. You can see how it's a little underlapped over here and it was also coming to the buckle. Both of those movements, the rotation to the mesial and the translation to the buckle, those have both happened very nicely. You can see that with the green here and the green here. Uh, but the buckle lingual inclination, that root torque that I was looking for in this case, didn't happen 100%. How do I know that? The grain. Even if my eye can't see it, the computer's saying, Dave, there was a little bit of buckle root torque that just didn't happen in this case. No big deal. I got two out of the three in the first round. I'll just go back and do a refinement now. But when I do a refinement, I'm able to tell the technician exactly what I want. I want buckle root 
torque of tooth number 10. Tick National will be like, how did you know that? How did you know that that was the one detail that was missing? Easy. I got the GPT here. It tells me exactly what I'm missing and exactly where I am. Should I fool around with tooth number 10 rotation? No. Nah. Do I have to fool around with tooth number 10 translation? No. Do I have to do a refinement of the lower? No. Everything is exactly where I want it to be. I need about 10 more degrees or so of movement on the upper laterals, number 7 and 10. This is a genius device. This takes all the guesswork out of Invisalign. Now, we not only do this at the end of the treatment, we're also going to do this about every 10 weeks. So every 10 weeks when he comes in, before I even come into the room, my assistant Natasha is going to scan him in where he is at stage 5, at stage 10, at stage 15, at stage 20. And when I come into the room, I have a report card right there telling me where I am in the case. These movements are working well. These movements aren't working well. This tooth is slowing down. Now, a slowdown would look like yellow. So we have three colors. We got green. We've got gray or black. And then we have yellow. So in my case here, everything came out with the right movement except for two parts of one. That's incredible. I think Dr. Galler couldn't say it any better. I appreciate his enthusiasm. This is an incredible piece of technology. And if you haven't incorporated it into your practice and you're doing Invisalign, it's certainly the way to go. You're going to sell way many more cases. You're going to get better outcomes in a shorter period of time. It's totally worth the investment. And if you're a GP, you can use it for a million other things. If you're not sure what you can use it for, please message me on LinkedIn or send me an email, info at straightsmilesolutions.com. You can visit my website, www.straightsmilesolutions.com. We're here to tell you about scanners and about ortho and about how you can increase your production. We're not affiliated with any one scanner system. We just happen to love the iTero Elevant, and we want to tell you about it. And thank you, Invisalign. I don't think you knew that I was going to use your video, but it was so great. I had to share it with everyone. Hey, this is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, and today we're going to be talking about the iTero 5D scanner slash the Neary scanner. And... I just went to a webinar that it kind of explained it a little bit more and normally I don't really get that much into which scanner is better for you because it's really whatever works best in your hands and here at Straight Smile Solutions we're all about launching and scaling ortho and there's a lot of scanners that work for this right so it's just your personal price point what systems you want to use stuff like that. Normally the iTero is really expensive and it has pretty high monthly fees. So a lot of my doctors are not that interested in it. But with the release of this newest 5D Neary scanner, um, I since my clientele for the most part are pediatric dentists and general dentists, I can see how this would be really useful for your practice. So I just wanted to kind of um, let you know what I heard in the webinar and just kind of relay it back um, just so you have an idea. But you can go to itero.com, click on products, and see a little bit more about the scanner. But the cool thing about the scanner is it does everything the regular iteros do. You know, obviously, it's a scanner. Um, it's a way to capture 3D imaging, capture data, almost like intraoral photography. The quality is super good. But um, they have the time lapse, which is really helpful, um, where you can chart pathology in terms of recession. Um, attrition, abfractions, and show the time lapse of it over time. That's really powerful. Um, but on top of that, the newest thing for this one is going to be the Neary feature, which is basically almost like an x-ray. It's not an x-ray because you're doing it from the occlusal. And you can see here in this um, picture right here, I mean, this is what you're used to seeing, right, on an iTero. But this one with the 5D, you're actually able to see decay from an occlusal standpoint, which the benefit, of course, if you're a general or pediatric dentist, I mean, that's awesome because let's say you either don't have the insurance authorization to take x-rays or there's a lot of crowding or the patient is not tolerable and to doesn't tolerate x-rays well, maybe it's a little kid or something like that or a geriatric patient or just somebody who has difficulty with x-rays um, or philosophically doesn't like x-rays. Um, this is a great feature because it's totally non-invasive. There's no risk. There's no exposure. You can clearly see the incipient decay here um, and you don't have to take an x-ray. So is it the gold standard? No, it's not a bite wing. So you obviously, before you decided to do a fill, you might need to confirm with an x-ray, but it's a great way just as a screening tool that's 100% non-invasive to, especially in crowded patients, you know? So 
I think it's awesome. I think it's definitely a game changer um, in your practice to think about doing something like this. Um, they did not say what the price point was and I couldn't really find it on the website. I'm sure it's crazy expensive. They did mention that you could upgrade an element two, not an element one, assuming you have all the hardware and software um, and everything like that. But um, yeah, I mean, I think if you're thinking about it, it's a great idea. I mean, obviously you need to make a decision it makes even more sense if you're doing ortho. There's a lot of reasons for this because you've got the outcome simulator and a lot of the other features. So hopefully this helps. Um, you will want to, if you're interested, contact the team at iTero. I don't work for them. I really don't care if you get it or not, but I just wanted to let you know that it's there and what it does and I can see value in it. That's pretty much what I wanted to tell you. All right, thanks so much. Don't hesitate to send us more questions. You can go to straightsmilesolutions.com to submit your questions, inquiries, and we'd be glad to make some content around it if we think it's something that'll help people. All right, take care. Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda, and I'm an orthodontist. I'm also the CEO of Straight Smile Solutions. We help dentists all over the world understand orthodontics better. We work with all systems, braces, appliances, and brands of aligners, and we support all systems and brands. This video will share content that is the property of Invisalign and Align technology. We've made this video upon request of 40,000 plus doctors, subscribers, and followers to help them achieve better outcomes with their Invisalign cases. We do not work for Align technology. All opinions expressed in this video are the opinions of Straight Smile Solutions and not Align technology. Thank you to Align Technology for continuing to support us educating and helping their doctors and letting us share this video around the world through YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, and all of our social media platforms. Together, we unite to make more smiles. If you have questions or concerns about this video, please contact us directly at www.straightsmilesolutions.com. Enjoy the video.